Welcome back to the Top Notch Documentaries YouTube channel. In this Israel Keys video, I should be going over the events following Keys' return from vacation following Samantha Koenig's murder. I hope you enjoy. Keys arrived back from his vacation in the early morning hours on Monday the 19th of February. His daughter was due back at school the same day, and Keys knew that he needed to get rid of Samantha's body. Her frozen corpse had been in his shed for weeks. Samantha's body was difficult to remove from the cabinet in his shed because of it being completely frozen. Blood stained the cabinet floor and Keyes decided to burn as much of the evidence of the crime as possible. He used his fireplace as his evidence destroyer. Keyes managed to remove Samantha's body from the sleeping bag and tarp in the cabinet. All of this ended up in his fireplace or a garbage bag. Keyes took water and mixed it with bleach, proceeding to wash away any blood evidence in the shed. He placed Samantha's thawed out body onto a constructed wooden table and secured her hands to the wall with some rope. He had sex with her body and then went into his house. I've heard that Samantha's body couldn't have been thawed out in such a short space of time, even with the heaters located within the shed. Whether Keyes deliberately left out details of his sickening actions, or was just lying for an ulterior motive, is unknown. Either way, I'm surprised that he confessed to committing necrophilia. Keyes hadn't taken a photo of Samantha Koenig for his planned out ransom at this time. He'd been checking out the Alaskan news, which covered Samantha's kidnapping, and was aware that the ransom money had been rising over the past few weeks. Eager to get his hands on the cash, he looked for a way to create some proof that Samantha might still be alive. Over the next couple of days, Keyes went about his daily routine of working and also travelling around to pick up different items for his ransom request. Keyes picked up a Polaroid camera and some film along with a typewriter, makeup despite having Samantha's and some fishing supplies. Keyes discovered some newspapers about the Samantha Koenig kidnapping and took them to include in the ransom photo. The papers were time stamped, which must have been Keyes' attempt to pretend that the photo had been taken on the same date. Keyes would take many hours applying makeup to Samantha's face to make it appear like she was still alive. This warped process involved Keyes sewing Samantha's eyes open and braiding her hair like he would do his own daughter. In my opinion, Samantha doesn't look like she's alive in the ransom photo. For some reason, Keyes decided to dismember Samantha. Whether he had already decided on a lake disposal site or he wasn't interested in burying her is anyone's guess. Samantha's decomposing body was smelling because it was now beginning or had already thawed out. Keyes was concerned about the decomposing odour that was soon to emit from his shed. Why did he pick dismemberment? He had already done it before with at least two victims in Washington. Did Keyes do it as a practicality, since he didn't want to bury Samantha? Apparently, he had planned on originally temporarily hiding her corpse in his backyard, so he might have already been fixated on the idea of submerging her body in a lake. Keyes placed Samantha's body on visqueen sheeting, which covered the shed. I can only imagine it looking like a scene from the kill room from Dexter. Using a knife and power tools, he dismembered Samantha Koenig and put her body parts into triple bagged garbage bags. Keyes had already picked out Matanuska Lake because of the depth of the lake, which appears to mirror that planning stage in his Washington Lake disposal victim sites. The lake was around 35 miles from his residence and he had placed the triple bagged garbage bags on his truck and made the journey to the lake with the reason given being ice fishing, if anyone was to query him. Keyes had also discussed the possibility of hiding Samantha's body along the Kanik River, where another serial killer called Robert Hansen once hid his own victim's bodies. Keyes spent some hours cutting a hole in the ice with a chainsaw and knew that he'd be returning to dispose of Samantha's remains within the next few days. It was around this time that someone had an encounter with Keyes at the lake. Keyes got mad at some dogs that were barking at his truck, which contained Samantha Koenig's remains. The owner was pretty freaked out at Keyes, 
and Keyes was obviously very annoyed and on edge because of the situation. The guy didn't put two and two together until after Keyes was caught. Keyes returned home and realised that he had forgotten about going to a parent-teacher meeting to talk about his daughter's schooling. Keyes clearly had other priorities and things on his mind. Keyes would make trips back and forth to dispose of Samantha's body. Five garbage bags with fishing weights connected were dropped in the lake in total. Worried about leaving his truck in the lake parking lot, presumably because of the encounter with the man and dog, Keyes was cautious about his movements. Not risking leaving his truck with a dismembered girl's body for the public to stumble upon, Keyes spent the day at the lake and caught some fish. Attending the Rebook Parent Teacher Conference, he was happy to hear about his daughter's excellent school performance and promising future. On returning home, he cooked his girlfriend and daughter the fish that he had caught from Matanuska Lake. On the 22nd, Keyes made his last trip to the lake and disposed of one more garbage bag. Keyes took his dismemberment tools to the landfill like he did with his computer which definitely contained incriminating evidence. He went above and beyond in getting rid of any item of any significance, either burning it or chucking it away beneath trash. He was not planning on being caught. Keyes later informed the FBI about the exact coordinates of where Samantha's body could be found. The FBI made a point of keeping away the media attention from the lake and soon discovered Samantha Koenig. This has been the aftermath of Samantha Koenig's murder. As always, thank you for watching.